Hey, how's it going, dividend investors? Dennis here, showing you how much I've made in dividends for the month of October. So I'm excited to show you guys here on my portfolio. It is just through M1 Finance here today on the payouts, but what we're gonna do is jump into this portfolio and take a look. But before we do that, if you are somebody who needs to refinance their student loans to lower that interest and pay less money on those loans, check out the link down below to learn how you can refinance entirely for free. The nice thing is that link does help out support the channel, but gives you a nice little bonus. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop onto the portfolio and let's take a look and see where we're at. So first and foremost, we like to kind of see where we're at with the current value and we just hit over 15,000. Now, this can go up and down depending on how the next couple of weeks go, but honestly, I'm really excited to uh, hit over this uh, huge, huge milestone. So uh, we were sitting around like 13, 14,000 for a little longer than I was hoping. If we actually shorten this up right here over the last month, um, actually maybe the last quarter, no, last month. So you can see right over here, um, we were kind of having our ups and downs, uh, you know, week in, week out, day after day, and we had this nice little drop uh, at the end of October, and we're kind of coming up on a nice little, you know, incline right over here. So it was kind of a little tedious uh, to see, especially when you consider that over, let me go over the last year here. So over the last year, except for obviously um, a few times here, we've been having a nice upward trend. Uh, obviously a lot of that is with the net cash flow that we're putting in, but there are of course the market gains as well as you can see. So we've had in the last quarter market gains of $462.19 and we've earned over $68.46 cents in dividends, which is fantastic. I know some people don't like the money way to returns on this platform, which by the way is M1 Finance. And if you wanna check them out, I'll also link them down below. You guys can go ahead and check them out there. But for those that wanna know where I'm sitting at as far as actual unrealized gains, because of the market drop in end of October, I am down right now to $921 of unrealized gains, which is about 6.54%. But because uh, M1 Finance does do what they call the money weighted return. Uh, that also includes like dividends and stuff. You'll see that my total gains is $535 for the quarter. And then let's actually go look at the total right now in all time. I'm actually up $1,500. I don't really worry about the percentage because the percentage is a little off for me. But right here, $1,500 is how much I've made in gains total, which is, you know, any companies that I might have sold off for profit, I kept in the portfolio. And this is just kind of reminiscent that that money was effectively in this portfolio only because I got those gains. So that's what I like about M1 Finance in this uh, little section over here. If we go back to, let's just go back for like the last month since we're kind of looking at how much we made in dividends for October. So we can see for the most part, we had tech down pretty significantly. Uh, right over here, we had Apple taking a huge hit. I bought a lot more into Apple. So their next dividend payout should look pretty nice across the board. Of course, AT&T was down and App or Microsoft was down just a little bit too. Now, if we actually go through here and take over on the growth side of things, uh, this growth portfolio, it looks like Amazon over the last month was the only one down in my portfolio here. A little surprising, but the nice thing is I was also uh, dollar cost averaging. If you don't know what that is, um, Effectively, you know, like right here, you can see I've paid on average $3,052.05 um, every time I entered into an additional piece of Amazon. Right now, the company is trading at $3,045.50. So since, let me get the marker here. Since this is less than what I actually paid right over here, every time I buy more at this price point, then the actual sh uh, average share price will go down, which is what they call the dollar cost averaging or more commonly known as DCA. So that's always good for me because I like to try to dollar cost average as best I can. And then let's see here, what else we got? So we got financials uh, was up right here. You can see about $58. Financials have been doing really well um, in comparison to the rest of the market. So I'm kind of happy about that. I do have a couple uh, stocks in there. And then we have uh, retail. You can see here, we're down just a tiny bit. Uh, Vanguard ETF, which is the VOOG I have, uh, pretty much broke even for the whole month. Uh, real estate has been taking a pretty big hit at about four and a half percent over here. Industries were actually up almost six and a half percent, which is really nice. And then consumer products were up about 1.65%. And then health were also down about 1%. So across the board over the last month, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride, like we mentioned, ups and downs. I think if we go into our activities, um, you're going to see, like right over here on October 30th, I did 15 buys. 
Um, and I kind of put it across the board with companies that I saw opportunity to be able to buy at really, really good prices. Um, a little bit of this was, you know, 10 here, 10 there. Um, so nothing massive for one company except for like Apple and Microsoft. I just saw some great opportunities. Like here, I bought Apple at $107.75. If I'm not mistaken, as of this recording, let me see where they're currently sitting at right now. So they're at 110. So they're, they're definitely going back up. But uh, what I'll do is also show you here. So that was back on October 30th. I did another buy on November 2nd, um, a very small amount. I got paid out dividends. So that was closer to the current price. And then where was the next buy? So October 29th. So you can see I was doing quite a few buys at the end of October because of that dip, which is really important to kind of showcase here too. I don't think some people showcase, hey, when they're actually buying. So I buy when the market is down because that's when I get the most value. So I bought this one. Obviously, this is actually higher than what the uh, current share price is. So I definitely paid a little bit more for that one. And then let's see here. So right here on October 23rd, um, we can go down here about more Apple, 115. So you can see that even though I was buying, that was still at a good price point in my opinion, but obviously with the market constantly going down, I was still buying even though it was, you know, for me effectively, buying at a higher price point, the market going down, and then me buying again. Uh, but what that effectively leads to is just making sure that I'm dollar cost averaging. Um, like even if I buy right now, obviously my uh, share price is gonna keep going up, which is okay, only because I still find this to be a good value long, long term. Because let me see if we can look at Apple right here. So you can see their 52 week high right over here is $137.98. So if they get back to that uh, 52 week high, we are still going to be doing really well, even for paying at $110 or $115 a share. So let's go back to the portfolio here and let's actually, actually let's go back to the activities tab and take a look here with our dividend payouts because of course that's what we're here for. So let's see how our dividends did for the last month. Let me actually go ahead and set this up. Oops. Let me go ahead and put October 1st, 2020, and then we're gonna go from 10, 31, 2020. And then we're gonna go ahead and just do our dividends only. So you can see we only got paid out three dividends for this month. So not a lot of payouts. Um, and part of the reason is because I was actually scaling down the amount of companies that I have. I was actually upwards of like 40, 45 different companies. And now I'm all the way scaled back to 28. I recently sold uh, a stock that I talked about here on the channel uh, recently. So that way I dropped it from 29 to 28. So less dividends that I'm gonna be getting paid out from different companies every single month. But I think that overall the dollar amount that I'm gonna be getting paid out is gonna go up because that money went into a lot of dividend paying stocks. So you can see here on October 1st, I got paid out from ADP. We got $2.04. Uh, then on October 15th, we got paid out from Realty Income for $2.47. This company here is a monthly dividend stock. So that is gonna be essentially what I'm gonna get every single month. And it's gonna go up, not only for buying more in, of course, but also too, because of dividend increases as they come along. And then we can see here on October 30th, we got NRZ um, and we got a whopping $7.54, which I think is some of the highest I've ever earned in the dollar amount, except for AT&T that I just got paid out also on November 1st, but that's obviously for next month's total. So right over here, uh, we all together have equaled out to, let me get my pen again. So all together here, you can see for the month of October, we got paid out $12.05 across the board. Uh, if we look at last year in October at this time, uh, we made $7.32. So a nice increase from the year prior. And then if we look actually at the first month in the last quarter, uh, which was July, we got paid out $13.80. So a little bit less than we got in the first month of the last quarter. So that's never a, a good thing. We don't wanna be going down. We obviously wanna be going up. But I think part of that was because of me selling off a couple different stocks. So I have, like I said, less companies that I'm getting paid from, but the ones that I am getting paid from are going to eventually be larger. So I think maybe some of the ones I sold were the ones that got paid out in the first month of each quarter. So that right now, if we see here, I technically already have my November in here. Let me actually clear that out temporarily. That was my AT&T. So you guys get a sneak peek at AT&T for 
next year. So right over here, uh, we can see obviously first uh, month in the quarter, we had the 1205, but we actually have for our full year of 2020, thus far we have $673.86. So we actually just passed up what we made year to date for 2019 and we still have you know november which is gonna come out to looking like a really great month as well as december which is when when we get paid out from our uh vanguard funds so our vanguard funds get paid out you can see here on the uh third month of every single quarter so that's going to happen here in december as well and i'm hoping that we're going to be on par with what we made last year if not more so we're going to definitely uh, overturn what we made in 2019 vastly like it's going to be a, a really nice amount and i'm excited for that uh, i don't think we're going to hit over over a thousand dollars this year but we're going to be pretty close and we're going to destroy that number in 2021 that is a for sure thing and then if we kind of look at the graphs right over here this kind of just gives us an idea of how we're doing um we can see in the first quarter of uh 2019 versus 2020 uh second quarter uh, 2019, 2020, and so on here. So you can see the third quarter in 2019 was definitely much lower than we had in 2020. So that's going to be a really nice help to, you know, obviously surpass what we already made and then and then some as well. So I'm curious to see how we're going to uh, end up for the year. Obviously, so far for Q4, we're at that $12. And then you could see the monthly payouts right over here in this graph kind of looks really, really nice. And then I also actually have another graph that I'm gonna jump into really quick. So this was from another creator here on YouTube. Their channel is called Investing Sensei. Uh, so right over here, I just plugged in my same numbers just so the graph looks a little bit different. Um, you can see right over here, the annual dividends and how that looks. Obviously I still have my November one up. So let me delete that for a second. So those numbers match up from mine. And you can see the quarterly dividends right over here. So you can see for the most part, they're going up. Obviously, sometimes they go down a little bit, but for the most part, we're seeing that nice trend upwards, which is what we wanna do. Uh, you can see here with everything that we're making, uh, we are currently averaging out dividends of $75.38 a month. Majority of that comes from my Vanguard because that's when I get those big dividend payouts, but the goal is to have some good amounts in my Vanguard account, which is retirement, and then some with my M1, which is going to be dividends I wanna use when I'm in my like mid 40s or maybe even early 40s as well too. So my goal is to get over $1,000 a month on those companies. And the way to partially do that is of course the dividends, the growth on the stocks, entirely, but then also dividend increases, which a lot of people don't really talk about. So um, I like to kind of mention these in these videos where in the next month or the next few months when I'm getting paid out, which companies announce their dividend increases. And one of them is AbbVie, so A-B-B-V. If you have them, what we're gonna do is go into their dividend tab here. And this is my favorite thing to do. So we're gonna go into our dividend news. And before we do that, actually, what I wanna show you guys here is that over the last five years, the average growth has been about 20.86%. So obviously part of that is because some years the company has done really well, but uh, what we're gonna do is look into the dividend news here. And you can see right over here where it says, Avi declares a dollar and 30 cent share quarterly dividend, which is a 10% increase from the dividend of a dollar and 18 cents, bringing the Ford yield to 6.45%. Kind of a shocker here, uh, partially because of just how you know everything's been going on in the world and thinking that maybe they were not gonna do as big of a dividend increase, partially because their yield is still currently pretty high. But this is my favorite thing about dividends is when they do dividend increases. Like I just got a 10% raise on my stock with Avi because I just hold on to the company and I'm getting paid out those shares. Originally I was gonna get paid $1.18, now I'm getting paid $1.30 per share. Now it's obviously not a ton of money when you have small increments of them. So if we go into, let me clear this out here. So if we go back to the main page here, I'll, I'll just show you here as an example. So with Avi, right now, um, we currently have three shares, uh, well, 3.17 shares. So it's not gonna equate to a ton of money, but let me kind of just give you an example here. So let me bring out my calculator. So let me see, what was, let me actually go back to Avi here for a second. So right over here, it is paying out a dollar and thirty cents before it was a dollar and eighteen cents a share. So that's an extra twelve cents uh, right over there. And then if we go back over here, so we can see. So if we times that by the amount of shares we have, so three point one seven four six eight. So that's an extra thirty eight cents that we're going to be making 
on this dividend that we're gonna get paid out for doing absolutely nothing. Like I did nothing to get this 10% increase. And that's of course every quarter. So if we times that by four, we made a dollar and 52 cents extra this year or over the next year, because uh, obviously that dividend increase typically will uh, get paid out the next four times. And then if another dividend increase happens, so be it. But the really cool thing is, is if I had larger quantities, this would be, you know, amp uh, amplified even more. So, you know, imagine if I had 30 shares or 100 shares or 1000 shares, you know, that number will just increase the amount of money that I made per share. So for me, making an extra dollar 52 in my dividends that already was, you know, good enough from this dividend yield uh, is going to be just that much more money for me. And I know a lot of people don't talk about that, but that's probably one of my favorite things to look at is those dividend increases. So yeah, really happy about the performance of the portfolio and the dividend earnings that I've made for the month of October. November is shaping up to look really, really good. So make sure you have that subscribe button hit down below so you get notifications when I release videos on how much I made in the month of November, as well as all the portfolio update videos that we do here on the channel. My name is Dennis. I wanna see you in the next video, so make sure you click it right over here. Thank you so much for watching.